Shimamoto IVAX 450. Well, at Rever, we typically don't do bike reviews and we figured with two different backgrounds, we'd sit down and just discuss our thoughts on the bike. What are your initial thoughts on, on this motorcycle? After riding it for the last week, I am just amazed with how it handles in the dirt, how it handles on the street. The fuel mileage is great. My background is in sport bikes, so my Yamaha T7 is the first adventure bike, off-road bike that I've ever rode. So I didn't really have a lot to compare it to coming into this. I'm just amazed, to say the least. I had the same. I honestly can say that I was not the most excited to ride this for 1,500 miles. Being a smaller bike, I just considered it like, oh man, it's not going to be the most engaging motorcycle. I was pleasantly surprised by the bike. I also ride a Tenere 700, but I have a dirt bike background. So I come from more of a motocross and like off-road background. And the bike was really capable. You mentioned you were a street rider previously. What are your thoughts on the street? Like anything notable or stand out to you or things that maybe you didn't like on the street? Riding this bike on the street, again, it blew me away. Like the steering and the handling on this bike is superb. It's got the stock tires on it, right? So they're not knobby tires, they're not street tires. They're kind of a good balance in between the two. The bike is lightweight and the, the weight is proportionate throughout the bike, making it just so easy to handle on the street. I mean, you can just push through those corners. I've rode other 400s, like actual street bikes, and it, it really kind of felt similar to those. And I think it's just because it is a smaller CC bike and it is, the weight is a little bit lower on the bike. So yeah, we, I mean, we shredded through the small corners on this trip yeah. for sure. And it, there was no point during the trip that I felt, oh, this bike's not handling well on the street. It just blew me away. It, it did great for pretty much all the street that we were riding on. I agree. I have not ridden a smaller bike on the street. I've ridden a GS, Tenere 700, V-Strom, Goldwing, and this bike was still just as much fun. We rode a lot of twisty roads and it definitely carved nicely through that and handled great. It has really consistent throttle delivery, so mm -hmm. it's never unpredictable. My only, I guess, issue with it, but it's not to the CF Moto's fault at all. It's just, it was a 450, but the pickup and go, we'd be cruising like 70, 75, and you're like, oh man, I wanna get around this car and like hammer it, it around, pin. but you gotta commit. <laughs> like yeah. you have to gauge your speed and your time but that's a 450 cc motorcycle. Mm -hmm. So I really enjoyed riding it on the street. I didn't feel like I was lacking any power except in that instance. It picks up and goes very well for the size of yeah. the bike. Like if we were gonna pass cars, you know, you do a couple downshifts and you can just really get it to go. Like you can really like max out those RPMs mm -hmm. on that bike. Well, that was on-road. Let's talk about off-road, which was a majority of our route. Yeah. And we were cruising on gravel roads, we got into some, let's say light tech, double track, no single track on this route, and some muddy sections, some challenging sections, some sand. and sand. <laughs> so we kind of got to test it in all, all kinds of conditions. Mm -hmm. What are your off-road thoughts since you're newer to off-road, but you crush it, and yeah, give us give us your thoughts. So coming into this trip, I, I was a little nervous, to be completely honest. I was told that the bikes were gonna have the stock tires on them. And, and I was nervous about that. I, had, I haven't had the best luck with the stock tires on my Tenere. These tires blew my mind. One of the things I really noticed and what stood out to me most about this bike, especially like in the mud and some of those uphill climbs that we had, it will just chug through. Like whether it's mud, rocks, even the sand, like these bikes, it didn't feel like the bike was struggling at any point. The weight of the bike, it's what, 425 pounds, I think, somewhere stock, around somewhere there. around there. Um, it, it doesn't feel that heavy. The Tenere is about 450 stock and this bike feels way lighter. It's lower to the ground, which I really like. It's really beneficial for like a newer rider to kind of help build that confidence. But the weight of, I mean, just the weight distribution on the bike just makes, the weight is lower than on the Tenere. So I feel like it makes it easier to handle off-road and it gives you a little bit more confidence through those more challenging sections like the rocks and the mud, it doesn't feel like the bike's gonna constantly tip over. What were your thoughts about the off-road sections on this bike? Well, first of all, switching to off-road, it has a button, you can do it on the fly, you just have to let off the throttle, whereas the Tenere, you have to stop, you have to not be moving, and then you hold the button down and it switches. So to me, just switching to off-road mode was incredible. Mm -hmm. I was also worried about the stock tires. They have their own 
stock tire, which is very sim similar to the, the Scorpion, uh, Scorpion Rally, I believe, that comes on the T7. It performs way better, in my opinion. And yeah, the bike handled great off-road. Uh, it's very approachable. We both had the Rally seat mm -hmm. on it, which adds a little more height, but none of us felt like we couldn't touch. And I, I can fully flat foot, even with the Rally seat, but I also, at 6'1", I still don't feel like I'm crammed up on the bike. And once you get up on, on the pegs and you're standing up in the off-road sections, it's very nimble. It feels pretty narrow underneath you. And, and you can really, really go at it. And then my one con goes back to the power. I'm used to having a little more aggressive style where I want to wick the throttle in the corner to spin the tire. And you just don't have that as much with a consistent throttle delivery. But that's not a bad thing for anyone. It's actually a great thing, especially if you're a newer rider and you don't want that snap right out of that corner to spin that tire. It's, it's very consistent and yeah, predictable, but it was a lot of fun. Not only is the bike lower and a little bit lighter, but the power delivery I think is great for someone that is just starting out with adventure bikes. For I mean, sure. I feel like my confidence level on this bike compared to my T7 is so much different, which kind of shocked me. I wasn't expecting to feel as confident on a bike that isn't my own, but I felt like I was going through stuff that I probably wouldn't have attempted on my T7, just because the fear yeah. of tipping over or getting hurt. I feel like you're less likely to whiskey throttle on this thing and get yourself into situations that you might not be able to get yourself out of. So. Yeah, you definitely noted a few times, you're like, I don't think I would have felt confident throwing that down on, on the T7. Yeah. We yeah. went through a pretty gnarly washout and you committed and you crushed it. And yeah, the bike, I feel like definitely aided in that. Yeah, this bike eats the dirt, it shreds on the, sh on the street and it's just, it's the best of both worlds. I mean, that's what you kind of expect to have an ADV bike. Also, and I didn't get a chance to even play with the suspension, but it comes with KYV adjustable suspension on it, which is rad in itself. And then just the setup looks clean. But on both these bikes, we have the high fender and we have the rally seat. Um, <laughs> neither of those but those are always an option when I think when you're buying the bike is you can get those add-ons yeah the one hand adjustable windshield too that is very super nice, nice. you can just <laughs> yeah. but just using one hand to spin that dial so this bike comes out to be about 6,500 bucks to buy which is insane for an adventure bike the quality that we've seen I mean in general yeah it's yeah insane for an adventure bike but man like the components you get on it It'd be a great bike for 10 grand, honestly. Like yeah, it's, a, it's yeah. an awesome bike. I know for me, I have a lot of buddies that are adventure curious and they're they're looking to get into it. Coming from like a dirt bike background, but the price, like a GS is really expensive. Mm -hmm. Even the KTMs are like, I don't know, 17 grand, 16 grand, somewhere in there. And this is definitely a more approachable bike to get them into it. And you don't need anything special. Like as long as you can get out, explore, ride. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think this bike's gonna take take the market by storm. Let's talk about setup. Both had different setups. You mentioned high fender versus low fender. I think both of us agree we like the low fender Low more. fender, team low fender. Um, <laughs> but setup on the back, you had soft luggage, mm -hmm. I had hard luggage. What are your thoughts on, on having that on there? Did that affect you in any way riding this bike or? Um, so yeah. I only rode with the hard luggage on the street, um, but the soft luggage, I mean, I run, I run soft luggage on my Tenere as well, so it felt pretty much the same. Like, I didn't notice the weight holding me back. I didn't notice struggling at all or hitting my legs on it or anything like that. It, the soft luggage is fantastic, and I like the setup. It's, so the luggage that we were using is actually CF Moto's own brand, and I, I love the setup of the bags. They're waterproof, for one, and it comes with like a, like a shell, and you can just put the, the CF Moto bag into that shell, and so you can take it out, put it back in, wherever you're going, take it out to go into your hotel or take it out to unload all your stuff. You had the hard luggage on, on your bike. How, how did that do off-road? Yeah. yeah, so I had the, the hard luggage set up. I've never ridden with hard luggage. Panniers, top case. Top case for me was the factor that I didn't enjoy the most. Uh, when I got on gravel or sand, it definitely felt like my front end was swimming a lot more. I rode it one afternoon without that top case and the bike felt dramatically better, so I can't even imagine how the bike feels without any luggage on it. I would prefer not to have the top case on there the next time I, I go on a trip. Uh, on the street, it was great though. I didn't really notice it, um, but yeah, I 
I really enjoyed it with the hard, hard cases. Um, I think I'd prefer soft cases just for my riding style, but the bike was, was great with that. So we did run into a couple issues um, on our second, or actually our last day. Most of them were just issues that you'd run across with any off-road bike, really. Something happened with the front brake caliper. I don't know if it was like a seal went bad or something happened, but basically the front brake is not, it's losing pressure. And, and we bled the brakes, you know, we did all the, the things that you have to do and, and it didn't fix it. So I think that it just needs a whole new brake caliper, which sucks because the bike only has like, what, 1,500 miles on it? I think. mean, technically these are pre-production models. They were hammered on at yes. the previous event. <laughs> so that could be a factor in that. I didn't feel like the quality was lacking. There were no components that I thought would scare me or intimidate me from buying this bike. Um, yes, CF Moto is Chinese based. What's the difference with that? What's the difference between buying a bike from KTM? What's the difference between buying a bike from BMW? They're all manufacturers um, or OEMs. And the CF Moto bike to me has been really awesome. I think we ran into that issue. They were also hammered on at a previous event. So I think that had a contributing factor. It was dropped a couple times yesterday, but for the most part, I, I really like how these bikes held up mm -hmm. and I think that with the dealer network and then I believe that these new Ibex 450s, CF Moto is going to stand behind their product and they have a warranty on them. Mm -hmm. um, so I would definitely consider this and, and have some peace of mind when buying this bike. The bike handled awesome. I would definitely buy one. I hope I can convince some friends to buy one to go, mm -hmm. go on trips with me. CF Moto Ibex 450, it's proved. Two thumbs up from Bree. And then if you don't believe that, you can just go ahead, give a gas, and find out. <laughs> <laughs>